Hi everyone, so uh, we should be live. Uh, as always, I will wait 10-15 seconds to make sure that everyone makes the switch to the, to the q and I'm here with the two authors of the paper. If you have any questions, please ask them in the chat. In the meantime, uh, I will ask one of myself. So, uh, your paper is based on the idea that using fewer test cases may lead to simpler repairs. Can you be a little more specific? on why do you think these smaller repairs will uh, generalize to the entire test suite? Um, can you repeat the last part of that question? Uh, so why do you think uh, having a smaller repair on a reduced test suite will generalize to the entire test suite? Um, so I think generally our idea is that, um, so a program, it's, it can be, if a program can be modularized into different parts, um, then it generally, uh, a fault in the program is going to fall into one of those parts. And so if we kind of restrict the test case to just looking at that one specific part, then generally it can generate these simpler repairs. Um, just in that it gives the program a little bit more freedom and the changes that it can make to the program. It's not so con constrained to a very specific area. So. Yeah, uh, that wasn't, yeah. There is a question in the chat, but that was not a real one. Uh, so uh, on the same direction out, can you make sure you do not overfit to a smaller uh, test or smaller test cases? Or how do you make sure not to learn on those specific test cases? Um, yeah, so overfitting was definitely um, you know an issue that we did see happening. Um, but our idea with that is that if we can build a framework that will, you know, it'll get all of these test cases or it'll get all of these repairs and some of them might be overfit. Um, but then if we run it against, say, uh, the full test suite after the fact, then we'll be able to sort of eliminate these overfit ones or at least whatever ones are able to be caught by the full test suite. And then at that point, we'll have, you know, a set of test cases that shouldn't be overfit as far as we can tell. So there is some questions in the chat. One from Eric Fredericks. Uh, how did you find uh, lexical selection in comparison to more traditional selection techniques? Uh, so Lex case, we didn't really um, do a whole lot of testing with that. It was just um, something that we've seen in terms of, um, you know, another way that people are using genetic improvement to kind of get different types of repairs. Um, so that's something that we haven't personally really dealt with a whole lot, but it was something that we took into consideration. Oh. Right. Uh, one question from Justina. Uh, how would you define the specification for the partial repair? So I guess, how do you choose uh, which uh, subset of the test you to consider? Um, so, so far, that's kind of been uh, more of like a, a random selection. So we just take, so we, we say we have our test cases and we're splitting them up by isosceles, scalene, whatnot. Um, and so we're just saying, we're just going to remove a certain set. So we're just going to remove scalene and see if that does anything. Um, so that's kind of been our approach so far. Um, and so I suppose in the future, uh, when we make our framework, we may be looking at ways that we can really narrow down what test cases we want to remove. But so far, it's been more of just removing them and seeing if that generates simple repairs more often. Uh -huh. One remark from Alexander Bargel. Um, did you uh, compare to, for example, a fail first approaches uh, when you um, have your sub subset of the test suite first uh, with the imp important failure first and then uh, stop evaluating as soon as uh, it fails? Um, so generally, we um, just had it running. Um, and then it would either it would find a repair or sometimes it wouldn't find a repair depending on what kind of test suite we had. Um, so yeah, sometimes it did fail right away. Um, but generally our approach there was to just see if we were able to get repairs with the test suite that we were using. And then from there, you know, kind of evaluate the types of repairs that we were getting. Uh, so, uh one uh, detailed question from uh, Wesley Weimer. Um, 
it feels like there should be a relationship between using 75% uh, of the test cases on doing processing later versus uh, using a selection of such strategies that doesn't require the full fitness uh, on doing the processing later. Is there an uh, evolutionary computation approach that takes a similar pace but isn't framed as a preprocessing filter? Um, so that one I'm not sure I know as much about, so I'm not sure if Myra, you have any input on that one. Yeah, so I'm just reading Wes's question. Um, yeah, so so I think actually I'm going to answer this by not answering it. So there was a paper um, by Giovanni and um, Justina that would just appeared in ICSI where they did a test case selection. And it was a similar thing that they um, used par partial test suites in a sense to, and they found that they had more efficient repairs. But I think it's a similar kind of a, of a problem where you're using only parts of the test and you're allowing more freedom during the search and then at the end you use the full test suite. But I'm not sure if that answered your question, Wes, because I wasn't sure if you're asking about a specific name for a process that's already doing that or not. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure there are uh, other question. Um, yeah, so I, I definitely think it's this idea that, and somebody else had mentioned constraints in the ad as well. I think it's this idea of relaxing the constraints and letting the search have more freedom, um, but then at the end, um, using your full tests and just using part of them. But I think a key for what um, what um, Lindsay did is that she used tests that are based on um, higher level specifications rather than just random. So. She can say something about that, but I think if you just use random tests, this doesn't work as well. So, yeah. Um, and in terms of like the the random tests, um, we we did a little bit of running with that, um, but what we saw was really just that it, it wasn't really freeing it up enough, or that um, you know it's hard to remove these random test cases and then see it generate better repairs. With the idea being that when we're removing just these random tests, instead of specifying where we're removing them, then there's still all of these, this jumble of test suites or test cases that are, you know, still conflicting or still constraining it in ways that we, that aren't really helping. Hi, 